Mike Westhoff's going to give it to you. Broncos head coach Sean Payton tabbed him as his assistant head coach as he continues to build out his staff for the Denver Broncos. How does it impact the team overall? You get that and much more in today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome into a brand new episode of Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Just want to say thank you so much for everybody for tuning in, making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day. Every single day you can get this podcast free and available everywhere you get your podcast and audio format. Or whether you're watching on YouTube, do us a favor, hit that subscribe or that follow button down below so you never miss out on a day's worth of Broncos news content coverage and more. Today's episode is brought to you by Ultimate Football GM. If you've ever dreamed about being a general manager of a football franchise, now you can. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up on the App Store our listeners get a free 100% boost to their franchise when using the promo code locked on in all caps in the game store. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter, Mile High Sports. Joined alongside, as always, by my co host, Sarah Bettinger, site expert, predominantly orange.com. The Broncos continue to build out their coaching staff slowly and methodically under Sean Payton. And he goes out this past week and he tabs one of the most legendary coaches in the game, especially on the special team side of the ball. Not the guy we thought was going to be the special teams coordinator, but the assistant head coach. Mike Westhoff is going to give it to you. That's right, baby. I love it. Cody, I, I think when I used to play Madden back in the day, you know, on, on the PS2 and things of the like, you used to be able to like change out your coordinators at the end of the year. I'm pretty sure whatever team I was controlling, I'm pretty sure I just deleted my special teams coordinator and always hired Mike Westhoff, like gave him whatever he wanted, you know, because he's got that high, he, he boosts your special teams unit, right? So, and the Broncos, they desperately need that, don't they? I mean, special teams have been far from special if I can be so corny to open up the show today. It, it's not been a good couple of years for the special teams between Dwayne Stukes last year, between Tom McMahon before that. It hasn't been a good run for the special teams unit. So getting somebody like Mike Westhoff, who last coached under Sean Payton in New Orleans in 2018, Cody, you're bringing a legend out of retirement. He's turning in the skis. I think he uh, he took one last picture from the slopes before heading into his official interview with the Broncos. And look, now you're adding that much needed experience to a coaching staff that really lacked that last year. Remember, that was the big thing with Nathaniel Hackett's staff, especially compared to the Vic Fangio staff. But now we're kind of getting back to what we saw with Fangio, which is a lot of guys with experience. Well, and you go back to that 2018 season, I believe they were the second ranked special teams unit in the NFL that year. That was the uh, infamous uh, non PI call that should have been called on Nikhil Roby Coleman. And Mike Westhoff even said after that game, he did like a local radio interview and he said that that 2018 loss to the Rams was the hardest loss he's ever dealt with in his career as a coach, which when you think about it, over 44 years of experience for him and so much in the NFL. I mean, he is considered a pioneer of the special team side of the ball, and he's going to kind of sit as the assistant head coach with Sean Payton, kind of his right hand, but also he's going to have a very important role with the new special teams coordinator, Ben Kotwika. We'll talk about him a little bit later on here in the show. He's going to kind of serve above him and help him kind of build a foundation because you are right. I mean, Denver's special teams unit has struggled massively the last four or five seasons. They've been good in some areas, but then they've lacked in some of the bigger areas, particularly against kick return, punt return coverage. The last year, Denver was one of the best units in terms of kick at, uh, kick return coverage against. So that that's promising, but they were almost mid in almost every other category, and they were bottom 10 in field goal percentage, and not to mention average starting field position. So we'll dive a little bit deeper in the weeds of that as we go on. But I, I think when you look at assistant head coach, Sarah, in your opinion, I, I'm eager for your thoughts on this. Why do you feel like it was important for Sean Payton to get a guy who has so much experience and so much respect around the NFL, like a guy like Mike Westhoff as his assistant head coach? Well, I think it's a great question. And the initial reaction that I kind of have is, do you wonder, did, did Sean Payton kind of see the positive impact that Jerry Rosberg had on the Denver Broncos last year, especially late in the season, to have a veteran coach like that in the building? But also, you know, you get a lot of guys in that locker room, specifically on the coaching staff, people who have done been there, done that, right? There's a, there's a real value to that. When you're talking about 
uh, man, if you want to get, like you said, deep in the weeds on some leadership stuff, like you never want to be the smartest person in the room, right? Because if you're the smartest person in the room, who are you learning from? So I think that you get a guy like Mike Westhoff in, in the room. He can not only mentor these players, but he can help mentor the coaches. Like he's he's going to be somebody that people look to, go to for wisdom, go to for advice. Like he's obviously not going to be coaching the the special teams unit directly right he's not the special teams coordinator so for him to have kind of just a hand and a little bit of everything that veteran mindset i think that brings something very valuable to the table especially as a second set of eyes to just say like specifically with the special teams if things aren't going well he can say like look you need to change this or you need to do this or you might want to consider this and he's been around the block enough times to where you think maybe these people will listen to him, obviously. So hopefully just a healthy work environment being uh, cultivated here is exactly what I think we're looking for. And Mike Westoff hopefully can be a guy to do exactly that. 75 years young. I mean, I, if yeah. I were still like, if I were coaching still, I would want to coach till I'm 75. I want to coach till I can't do it no more. I love football that much. Right. And there's some guys out there that are considered football lifers, but you know, for Westhoff, as you mentioned, the last time was 2018. So it's been a few years since he's coached in the NFL. I don't necessarily think he'll have to do much coaching. Right. I think that he's going to be a well-respected voice inside that building. I mean, heck it didn't even take long. He posted the picture on Twitter, you know, he, not to mention he's an author. He just released a book last year and, if you look at his story and you guys can look it up on the internet, it's too much to talk about here on the show, but man, what a, what a background that he has. So he's going to come in and serve in that kind of advisory capacitor, you know, capacity in a sense. I don't even know what I was trying to say there, <laughs> but for me, I think that's, that's always important. And obviously for a guy like Sean Payton, who we all know has so much experience, so much knowledge of the game of football, the fact that he's also willing to tap in to that type of resource in Mike Westhoff and particularly on the special team side of the ball that's a huge area where the Broncos need to get better. Now, while he's not going to be controlling a whole lot of that aspect, he's going to have a lot of say in some of that stuff with the new Broncos special teams coordinator. So Broncos country, we are eager for your thoughts down below. What are your thoughts on Mike Westhoff being the assistant head coach to Sean Payton and having a little bit of an oversight on the special teams side of the ball? Do you think that'll make the Broncos special teams unit get better in certain areas? What are your thoughts? Drop them in the YouTube comment section down below. If you're listening on your favorite audio podcasting platform, make sure you tweet us on Twitter at Cody Work NFL, at Sarah Bettinger, at Locked On Broncos. But on today's episode of the show, we're going to dive into the Broncos' newest special teams coordinator, Ben Katwika. What can we expect from him and what areas does he need to come in and put his foot down right away to help change on the special team side of the ball? You'll get that on today's episode, Locked On Broncos. This episode of the show is brought to you by our friends at Ultimate Football GM. And if you've ever dreamed about becoming a general manager, now is your opportunity to do that all from the palm of your hand. You can take over a team. You can rename them to the Denver Broncos if you want. You can hire your own coaches, hire your own coordinators, and also sign players in free agency. You can draft players, and you can play throughout your season to see where your team stacks up in the Ultimate Football GM experience. All of this is in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Football GM is completely completely free. It's playable offline and you can play on the go as you want and when you want to. And we've created a lockdown league for you to compete against other lockdown fans all over the world. Can you be the ultimate lockdown football GM? Choose the lockdown league in the app to join. And can you create a football dynasty? Lockdown Broncos listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using promo code lockdown in all caps in the game store. That's lockdown in all caps to make sure you check it out today. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up on the app stores. That's ultimate-gm.com, ultimate football GM. Start your dynasty today. The Broncos' newest special teams coordinator is going to be tasked with coming in and making changes that will give the Broncos a better chance to start in better field position on the offensive side of the ball, make opponents start in deeper field position for the defensive side of the ball. It is a tough job, and with the assistance of Mike Westhoff, Ben Kotwika could be a guy who could land on his feet in Denver with his experience. I mean, Sarah, initially, I think some people, when the news dropped, they're like, what does this mean for the Broncos? Who is this coach? How might it impact them? But I think when you go through and you look, as we always do, general practice, we look at what other fan bases are saying. We look at what other beat reporters are saying from the team that he was last on. And they're like, oh, gosh, this is a great, you know, this is a great opportunity. You look at the Vikings, you know, that's where he was the assistant special teams coordinator in 2022. 
and everyone saying, hey, this is a good get for the Broncos when he was with the Washington Commanders. There were so many people out there, and even our own Chris Russell of Locked On Commanders said, hey, this is a great hire for the Broncos. I'm excited to see why. I think that's the intrigue for all of us. We don't know yet, right? But we're fixing to find out. We're fixing to find out, and he's got a lot to fix as the special teams coordinator in Denver. Like you mentioned, you kind of always want to go back. What do other people say? Cody, I went and looked at his bio on the Vikings website, and there's something very interesting kind of at the very bottom, like, you know, where they have a little bit more of the personal information. You got all of his football coaching experience, and then at the bottom, it's like, this guy flew uh, an Apache fighter helicopter in the military and it was one of the best pilots. And I'm like, holy cow, like this guy is insanely cool, right? He's got to be one of the, one of the more decorated people, certainly on the coaching staff. And you love that, right? You love those, that kind of background, like the stories this guy could tell the, just imagine as a player, the, the analogies that you're going to get from a coach who was a, a pilot of a Apache helicopter. I mean, my goodness, like, I think he's going to bring plenty to the table. Like you mentioned, you look at what the other teams that he's worked for, those people, what what did they say? If they come highly recommended, like fans are not shy about being being happy that, you know, coaches, players are gone when they leave, right? And, and if fans are saying, hey, this is a good move, it's like, what will the Broncos vouch for a zero Evero with Panthers fans? Absolutely. Our fan base will be like, you guys got a great coach. Then there might be situations where you hire, uh, you remember like Butch Berry, he gets hired by the Miami Dolphins and there's a, a lot of Dolphins fans coming at Broncos fans because we're trying to say like, hey, things didn't go so well. So fans will be honest about that kind of stuff. It's great to hear that Kotwika has some positive reviews from the other stops that he's been. When I think when you combine that experience, right, he's also spent some time with Mike Westhoff when he was a member of the New York Jets coaching staff under former head coach. Guess who? Rex Ryan. And we'll talk about a little bit more about Rex uh, a little bit later on here in the show. But, you know, I think another thing we need to look at, Sarah, is when you look at a guy who's got 16 years coaching experience the way that Kotwika has, and now he's going to bring that to the table with the Broncos alongside Mike Westhoff, who we all know has 44 years of coaching experience. Wow, that's a lot. That's tremendous, too, by the way. That's a huge accomplishment. A lot of respect there for him. My question to you is, what are the biggest areas the Broncos need to fix on special teams? I'll give one to start, and I'll let you expand on it, and I can't wait to hear yours. But for me personally, I think that the development of the return game, I want to see how he can continue to work and with Mike Westhoff with Montreal Washington, who obviously will have to come into training camp and will have to prove that he's the return guy. He's going to have to make some improvements from last year from a fundamental standpoint. But I think he's the type of guy you need to just develop. You know how explosive he can be. How do you get him to take the next step? To me, that is one thing I want to see out of this new special teams coordinator. Yeah, I agree with that completely. And I think one thing that really we don't talk about it a ton on this show, and it's not really the most glamorous topic, but just the kicking game in general, right? Field goals, punting. It seems like, you know, one of those things that if you're if your team is good at that, you don't notice it a ton, right? You don't really notice unless you have a bad kicker or a bad punter. And I think, unfortunately, for the Broncos, like that's kind of been on a steady decline the last handful of years. Corliss Waitman got the opportunity to be the punter last year, had some booming punts as we expected he would, but just not enough consistency, in my opinion, Cody. And the same could be said for Brandon McManus, who, look, I, I was re-watching some Super Bowl 50 highlights from a few years back, and it, it reminded me that Brandon McManus, arguably the biggest reason why the Broncos went on such a big playoff run, the dude made, I think, like 13 field goals in the playoffs or something crazy like that. But he was such a key instrumental part of that team. Now you look at the 2022 iteration of the Denver Broncos and you evaluate things for what they are. I just think that there's not enough consistency from McManus these days, whether it's extra points, whether it's field goals. And yeah, I realize some of his misses, he's getting asked to go out there. Okay, go out there before the half and see if you can't nail one from 60 plus or, you know, against the Seahawks, whatever that, you know, decision was. I, I mean, there's certain things that are out of his control, but there's also things that are in his control. Like, you know, you, you, you score against a, a team that you need, you desperately need to just solidify like, Hey, we're in this game. You score a touchdown on your opening drive and then you miss the extra point. Uh, you can't have that kind of stuff. The, those are the little things, the little details that will cause teams to evaluate at the end of the season. You know, do we, do we keep this guy or do we move on? And he's got a big cap hit. So it wouldn't surprise me if, 
you know, Ben Kodwika, if he gets two new kicking specialists this season? Well, part of me is also wondering. I think um, Thomas Morstead, I think, is going to be a free agent. Remember him? Has some ties with uh, Sean Payton. Could he be in line there? But I do think one thing, Sarah, I think when you look at punter, I think you look at kicker, and you look at returner, I think those three spots right here coming into OTAs, coming into training camp, I think we'll see some changes. I think that there will be some competition brought in if some of these guys do get retained. You need that. You need to push guys. And look, I think another thing, too, with Montreal, Washington, the talent is there. You have to continue to mold that, you know, like a ball of clay. You know, it's not a finished product yet. You got to continue to mold that. And I think that's where Montreal, you know, has offered some insight because he didn't get to play the last two games of the season. He was benched. And, you know, that's a tough lesson for a guy who's, you know, drafted with some of the expectations that he had that, you know, contributed some in the passing game for Denver, but not utilized quite nearly enough. He's got to continue to evolve his game. I'm excited to see if he can do just that. But Broncos country, one of the bigger questions surrounding this Denver team, outside of kicker, punter, returner going into the next season, who will be the defensive coordinator? That has yet to be dropped here, but there's some intriguing news about some interviews that were conducted over the weekend for the Broncos. We'll dive into that and much more. But I wanted to tell you about the Lockdown Podcast Network and what we have going on right now. If you have a favorite basketball team, Nikola Jokic and the Denver Nuggets, for example, are my favorite team. I listen to the Lockdown Nuggets podcast so I can get my Denver Nuggets fixed every single day available on your favorite audio podcasting platforms or YouTube. The Colorado Avalanche are going on right now, so Lockdown Avalanche has you covered with everything as they hope to get healthy ahead of another run to a potential Stanley Cup. You can get all that action here, the Lockdown Podcast Network. What's the latest with the search for the Denver Broncos on the defensive coordinator side of things? We expect a resolution is coming here very soon. Just want to say thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country for tuning in and making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day on your favorite audio podcasting platforms or whether you watch on YouTube. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to listen and to engage with us talking all things Denver Broncos. If you're watching on YouTube, please do us a favor. Comment down below. Engage with other members in Broncos country. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, it would mean the world to us if you could go there and write a review. If you love Lockdown Broncos, leave us a five-star review and tell us why you listen every single day. We appreciate you so much. But with that said, what is going on with the defensive coordinator search there? We've got conversations going on about, okay, could it be Vance Joseph making his return after an eight-hour interview in Dove Valley? Or we got Rex Ryan being spotted in Centennial, reading the newspaper in a local hotel lobby and people trying to track flights in and out of Centennial Airport. I mean, we're at this juncture of the offseason where that is the most important thing as the Broncos look to hire their next defense coordinator. But there's so much other things that we have to highlight here about that. Let's start things off with the former Broncos head coach who spent eight hours in Dove Valley on Friday. I wonder, Cody, was he having the time of his life during that (laughs) interview? I can't help but think maybe he was, right? Eight hours hanging out with Sean Payton and George Payton and the ownership group or whoever is meeting with him. I, I mean, Vance Joseph, Cody, he certainly is a polarizing topic when you talk to people on Twitter or you look in the comments section. I don't think very many Broncos fans are like, there's certainly not a unanimous, hey, let's bring him back, our old friend Vance Joseph, right? That's not the sentiment. And and people really don't love the work that he's done as a defensive coordinator, despite the fact, I mean, you got to give him credit, right? The, the 2021 Cardinals defense was very good. And then the 2022 version was just kind of decimated by injuries. And the Cardinals also, you know, they let Chandler Jones walk in free agency and didn't really replace him. So there's certain things that you look at the writing on the wall for that Cardinals team. It kind of felt like things were trending towards them making big changes and they did. And Vance Joseph obviously was not a beneficiary of that. So I think that you got to be fair when you evaluate and you can't look at it as necessarily, well, things were bad in Denver when he was here, so we shouldn't hire him. Maybe that's it. Maybe that is a good enough reason for some people, but I don't know. Keeping an open mind, very important. That that interview that he had with the Denver Broncos followed up with, uh, you know, he's he's got an interview with the Philadelphia Eagles as well, Cody. So maybe some competition there with the Broncos. And I think that what I think ha- has been the case this whole time still remains true. I think that Sean Payton wants a head coach of the defense. and I think he wants to pair them up with a passing game coordinator. So whoever that ends up being. But Vance Joseph, it seems like maybe he may be moving on, maybe to the Eagles. We'll see what happens. But Rex Ryan also getting that official interview in Denver. 
Well, and it also came out that the Broncos, regardless of who they hire as defensive coordinator, they want Christian Parker and they want Marcus Dixon on staff. Everyone knows Christian Parker as the defensive backs coach has been monumental in the development of some players and also just the growth of the secondary has, has helped those guys find ways to get more takeaways. A tremendous teacher, one of my favorite coaches in the NFL, watching him as a DB coach myself. He does things the right way, and players are completely bought into him. Marcus Dixon has done, in my opinion, such a tremendous job on the defensive side when, you know, with the defensive line, I think with development of guys like Inyoma Uwazarike, who stepped up big when Draymond Jones went down with an injury. You look at that unit they've produced. Deshaun Williams was having a career year. I think those are all important notes to make. And it's also it kind of goes to the point, right, that they could be going with the defensive-minded head head coaches, the coordinator in a sense, right, the Rex Ryans, the Vance Josephs, and maybe Christian Parker is a passing game coordinator. And then maybe Marcus Dixon does stay on the defensive line staff because under Rex Ryan, I, it, our good friend Zahn on Twitter, the Oracle, I did see Marcus Dixon did play for him in New York. So something to keep an eye on there. But speaking of Rex Ryan, apparently he was spotted in Denver on Saturday morning in Centennial in a hotel lobby reading a newspaper of USA Today. And everyone's like, oh, my gosh, he's in Denver. Where's he at? What airport is he staying at? What hotel is he staying at? Like, is he getting on a flight from Centennial to go back to Bristol? Like, we we see a whole crazy thing and all the different like sticky note theories getting put out there on social media. But as we found out, Rex Ryan did interview for a second time for the Broncos defensive coordinator job, spent hours at the team facility. This was his second interview considering the first one was done during Super Bowl week via zoom with Sean Payton. And I also think we should also circle back to it as well. We haven't heard Sean Desai's name brought up at all. I think that's a good thing. I think that still means that he's kind of in play because as we've seen, anytime there's been any kind of leak or discussion about one guy, Denver's gone the other direction from where that has gone. So that's just the perception of it. I'm eager for your thoughts. Well, I can't help but wonder, you know, how many of these guys are they trying to get, you know? And I think that <laughs> a lot of people see this as like a one or the other type of proposition, but I just, I just don't know. Like you said, they want to keep Christian Parker. They want to keep Marcus Dixon. What if they want to hire Rex Ryan? And what if they want to bring, you know, Chris, you know, Chris Richard, who they interviewed as well, or what if they want to bring Sean Desai as well, or Vance Joseph even. I mean, I don't know how many defensive coordinator positions are left open around the NFL. Certainly, I, I think Vance would would take a DC job in Philadelphia over maybe a, you know, like a associate head coach and passing game coordinator in Denver. But still, it gets you thinking about these ideas. Like if Christian Parker stays on as defensive backs do you have a, another defensive backs guy come in like at, at what point is it too many cooks in the kitchen i guess but certainly makes you wonder like what is what is the chance that they maybe get more than one or two of these guys if you go especially if you go for rex ryan so i'm fascinated by it i think it the idea is kind of warming on me a little bit more as we go about these days cody especially when you consider the fact they may be paired up with a passing game coordinator Another cool note from the the Oracle that is Zahn, Cody, that I found to be fascinating. So when Rex Ryan was with the Buffalo Bills, they drafted Ronald Darby. And after Rex Ryan was fired is when the Bills traded Ronald Darby. So as we've talked about Ronald Darby maybe being a cap casualty or trade candidate this offseason, does that change a little bit if if Rex Ryan does maybe Ronald Darby stands to benefit more than almost anyone if Rex Ryan is brought in and he played for him in Buffalo. So that's something to kind of file away. That's a very interesting note from Zahn that I found to be like, hmm, it's one of those things you just maybe you'll think about down the down the line if they if he restructures in Denver or if he comes back on the current deal. So I'm fascinated by the idea of Rex Ryan, not necessarily like excited like i don't know exactly what he's going to bring to the table after this amount of time away but i i'm kind of fascinated to see could it work i mean maybe maybe it's worth maybe that's what sean payton's thinking too like hey, maybe maybe this thing could work out really well for us what even Adam Schefter, one of his counterparts at ESPN, said that Ryan has said he'll only leave ESPN if it's the perfect opportunity so we have to wonder, is Denver the perfect opportunity? And it's crazy to me to think there's been more buzz about who the next defensive coordinator will be for the Broncos than there has been any word or traction on offensive coordinator. So to me, we're at the point. Denver has a special teams coordinator in place, assistant head coach. We already know that. Now, once they make the hire on OC and DC, 
that means that we'll start seeing the position coaches starting to fill out. We, we talked about Zach Azani interviewing for some other teams, still in line for Denver, but Denver has a whole coaching staff that they'll still have to fill out after they get coordinators in place. To me, that's exciting, and we're only about two and a half weeks away from the start of the new league year free agency. Yeah, we could say almost three weeks, but we're going to have you covered here every step of the way, locked on Broncos. If you're a member of Broncos country, this is the place you should be every single day. We have fresh content for you every single day in video format, in audio format, and we love opening things up to all of you in Broncos country. Tomorrow's episode of the show, we'll keep you covered with the latest news in Dove Valley. Plus, we'll also hit on some mailbag questions we, we received from some avid listeners across Broncos country. With that said, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of the show, Making Lockdown Broncos, your first listen of the day. Sarah and I will be back tomorrow for a brand new episode of the show.